So I find this story really amazing, folks, on so many levels. Here's a guy, his name is Larry Brock, and he was involved in the insurrection. You might recall he was the one that had the tactical gear on. Here's a picture of him, the helmet, the gear, the zip ties. Literally wanted to kill Mike Pence and other key Republicans and Democrats as a part of the insurrection. And then he expected Donald Trump to pardon him for doing that. And I'm looking at this article from airforcetimes.com. And in this article, I find it kind of amazing. And this has been out for a while. This is not new. But during his trial, there was a major general who wrote a letter into the judge whose name was redacted from public court filings. We don't know who the major general was. But he said that Brock risked his life to support and protect U.S. forces from a Taliban attack flying below mountain peaks into a valley saturated with enemy forces. The result thwarted enemy advances on U.S. personnel, saved U.S. lives, and diffused an ever-escalating situation for the forces at that remote base in Afghanistan, the general wrote, the major general. So this man was a celebrated veteran, a good guy. And he said things like this. He served, all told, he served, I believe it was about a year in prison and then two years house arrest. But some of the things that this man said, folks, before the riot are absolutely, the judge called it chilling stuff, and it is. He said this, when we get to the bottom of this conspiracy, we need to execute the traitors that are trying to steal the election, and that includes the leaders of the media and social media aiding and abetting the coup plotters. Brock wrote in a November 9th, 2020 post, in a Facebook message to another user on Christmas Eve, of all things, he outlined what he called a plan of action if Congress fails to act on January 6th. One of the main tasks in his plan was to seize all Democratic politicians and Biden key staff and select Republicans. Begin interrogations using measures we used on Al-Qaeda to gain evidence on the coup. His plan of action also called for a general pardon of all crimes, up to and including murder for those restoring the Constitution and putting down the Democratic insurrection. So he knew what he was doing was criminal, and he expected to get Donald Trump to pardon him for it. He wrote, Do not kill LEO unless necessary, apparently referring to law enforcement officers. So that's the backdrop. Veteran, celebrated, served time, just released a video yesterday, folks, and he had this to say. Not one bit of remorse. Have a listen to this. I thank God that I've had the opportunity to serve my country under such trying and difficult circumstances. For 372 days, I have been a political prisoner of this administration. Although I have many things to say about my time and treatment inside the Springfield Gulag, that will wait. The first thing I must do is give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for my deliverance and liberation. To every American that prayed for me or wrote to me, thank you. Your support meant everything especially in the dark days when they threw me in the hole, especially when they were trying to have me killed. I ask every American to reflect on the fact that just four short years ago, we all believed we enjoyed the full protection of the Bill of Rights, the right of free speech, the right to assemble, the right to a speedy trial, and the right to a trial by a jury of our peers. But now, as many in the minority community already knew, those rights just don't exist anymore. Instead, we have FBI censorship and propaganda, warrantless surveillance, and indefinite pretrial and post-conviction detention of American citizens. And worst of all, the fundamental tenet of American jurisprudence, equal justice under law, has been corrupted. And now we have a two-tiered system of justice complete with political show trials, ranging from the former president to a common man like me. In the face of this banality of evil, you're right to ask what can one man or one woman do? Although you must continue to pray, to merely pray while Americans are being shipped to gulags as prisoners of conscience, well, that just mocks God and dishonors the sacrifice of our founding fathers and the shed blood of patriots who enshrined our rights in our sacred constitution. So I'm asking you today, please call your congressmen and senators and demand that so folks, prisoners of conscience, that's what he calls himself, prisoners of conscience. And to wear the, that uniform, folks, I mean, to me is 
it, things have changed. He's trashed the Capitol. He tried to subvert the election. He tried to kill key Republicans and Democrats. He does not deserve to wear that uniform. And folks, it just begs the question, is Donald Trump radicalizing people like this who have snapped and have no remorse after serving a year plus house arrest and all of that, no remorse for what they did? And we've heard Donald Trump talk about how he thinks the FBI is weaponized against him, how the ju judicial system is weaponized against him, and how the election was rigged. Of course, we know all of this. And we know that none of it is true. Why? Because it's gone through the court system and especially with the rigged elections, John, Donald Trump just had a jury of 12 convict him. And it isn't weaponized, folks. Despite what people think, it is not weaponized. And it's totally contrary to the, the rule of democracy that we've enjoyed for over 250 years. And it's totally contrary to what the founding fathers laid out. And... It's just time that we ask that question. Is Donald Trump radicalizing people like this, everyday Americans, to do the unspeakable? And what's next, folks? That's what I is troubling, most troubling about all of this rhetoric is that things happen. The insurrection happened. What's next? I think it's a question that we have to ask. Till next time, folks.